This has also happened to our guest, Maria Vallejo Naeri. She's a wife, a mother of three children, lives in London and Madrid. She's very renowned in her country and in the entire Spanish-speaking world. She is a novelist who has written seven books. The first novel was completely atheist, and then a powerful conversion took place here in Medjugorje, and other novels are turned to faith. She herself will best express this to you. Another, another thing, her friends that brought her here were Anglican, not Catholic. It is here that she met with the Lord. Let us greet Maria. Maria, welcome. I thank my friends, the Spanish, how happy I am that I'm able to see Spanish flags here. And you, my friends from Spain, know that the road was very mm. difficult to bring people here to this place. And now Medjugorje must go to Spain because we need it much there. In the same way as I needed Medjugorje, my friends, the Spanish need it. My story is a story of conversion, a sincere, profound conversion. I was born in a very rich family in Madrid, a family that economically had everything. And in the environment that I was in, I was always happy. I never lacked love in the family. We can say that God continually spoiled me until the moment of my conversion. My serve conversion begins some 10 years ago. I am married for 20 years. I have three children. And since I was married, my husband would say, let's go to Mass, at least on Sunday. And I didn't want that at all. I thought Mass was boring. I didn't even have interest in the world of the priest. I even considered that priests were foolish. And I thought that the nuns were wasting their time when they entered into cloistered orders. The life and the work of my husband took me to England to live among the Anglicans. And these Anglican friends were fervent believers in their Anglican faith. And they spoke to me, and they made it impossible for me not to go with them on the next trip to Medjugorje. And in me, a rage entered in. And I can see today that this is really the evil one. I started to attack them. And during this time of them trying to convince me, I heard a voice in my heart. It was a very clear, beautiful, 
feminine voice without words that I have to describe it. And these words in my heart spoke and said, why do you not come? I'm waiting for you in Medjugorje. And then she said to me, why are you so afraid of me? And I remember that at that moment, I was eating pasta. And I said, thought that maybe somebody in the restaurant was speaking to me. But it surprised me because these words were in Spanish and they were most beautiful. So I even turned around that maybe somebody who was behind me who said these words. And then I, all I saw was Mick Jaeger, who didn't have any reason to say something like that to me. I'm really sad that my Anglican friends are not here today. Because they laugh so much when they recall this anecdote. They tell me that at that moment I pushed the food away from myself. And then I said, I don't know what I'm saying now, but for the next pilgrimage that you make to Medjugorje, I will go to this Medju Medju. I couldn't even pronounce the name of that, that village. So that my friends rushed to buy me a ticket so that I wouldn't change my mind. But since I said yes, to the time that we were to travel, several months passed. So I, I regretted saying what I did, and I was really ill-willed all the way to the day that we were flying. When I came to the airport, I complained, I was angry at them. I said to them, what am I doing here? I'm gonna throw a bomb here. And complaining, I went into the plane and came here. And this village was much different 10 years ago. There were few, fewer shops. The pensions were less sophisticated. And we had the great privilege that the Franciscans at that time came to visit us to the pension where we were. When they said to me that I had to go to mass, I was got angry. I said, this is not true, this is a lie. And all these people are just a group of madmen. I was very ill-willed here at the Mass in St. James at 10 o'clock and an English Mass. I took pictures of people around there in the Mass, during Mass, instead of listening to the Gospel in the Mass. And when we came out of the church, there was a priest who came with us, uh, Father Michael O'Malley, who, who he said, hurry, hurry, because here where we are, one of the visionaries is going to come called Yaakov. And as the daughter of a psychiatrist, I said, ah, I'm interested in this. I'm going to catch him in his lies in two seconds. And then I came by this path in front of the confessionals. It was a beautiful day, bright, sunny, without a cloud. 
And I was surrounded by 12 friends. One of my friends in front, the priest, others behind. I said to them, hurry, I want to be in the first row. I want to hear this liar. At that moment, two or three meters away from the wall of the church, everything around me stopped. Imagine if you were to look at a film and the motor burns out. And all of the actors are in pause, frozen for a few seconds. Immediately I saw how my friends were frozen. I felt a great need to look up to the sky. There are many people who are here who have said that they have seen the sun spin. I have not seen absolutely nothing. But I couldn't stop looking to heaven. This experience lasted only three seconds. And I felt in those three seconds, in what I can describe in my own words, a great dew of love that descended upon me. I felt how I was all imbued with that love, my backpack, my hair, my heart. This was not water. It was transparent. It was supernatural. And the intellect perfectly understood that it was a dew of love. That dew of love spoke to my heart. In that very moment, I knew that it was Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ at that moment spoke to me. I want to die of the joy of the love that at that moment I received. There are no words by which I could describe how I felt that Jesus Christ loves me. I'm saying this to you, that you may be able to see how interesting all this is because I came here as someone who was completely distanced from Jesus and Our Lady. Remember that I said to you that Jesus didn't interest me at all. But I'm certainly saying to you that I felt his love. And I cannot describe this to you. The love that Christ has for each one of us is infinitely greater than what our reason can even imagine. I remained paralyzed also in pain because I felt the pain that Christ felt because of my sins and my poverty. And with certainty, I can say to you that the pain that Christ felt because of my pain was also immense. I was not a bad person. I was not a thief. I was not a murderer. Even more so, I thought that I was holy. I was a good mother. I was a good wife. I was a good friend. And I always thought that if I died, I would go straight to heaven. But the reality of that moment said to me, no. Many times you have lacked love and charity. Millions of times you have lacked the charity towards your neighbor. The love that I felt so much 
is that I wanted to die and go with that love. And as I to repeat to you, I was very happy at that period of my life. I didn't want to die. I was very much in love with my husband. And I adored my children. My littlest one was only one year old. But in my heart, at that moment, they were in the second plan. The only thing that I was interested in is in that love that was overwhelming me. And that experience lasted in my head for 10 minutes, but in reality, it was only three seconds. And in those three seconds, I want to live and abandon all my life and to follow God. When I came here to sit in these pews, I was completely confused. Visionary Yaakov came to speak. And when Yaakov started to speak, I felt in my heart that that young man is speaking the truth. So I started to cry in despair. I felt shame because of my sins. I want to run away from here. I want to hide under a stone that God may not see my shame. And I felt a great repentance, complete repentance. And I said to you, I am a novelist. In 99, I have written a novel. I've written my first novel for which I've received uh, one of the most important awards for literature in Spain. And in that novel, I spoke very badly about the church and the priests. Little age critics started to adore me. As I speak about the new novelist, new talent discovered in 1999 in Spain. And Jesus granted that in that great short experience, I may feel the pain that he felt when I had written that novel. When I returned to London, the first thing that happened to me, without understanding anything, I started to feel a great need. I couldn't stop going into the Catholic churches. And every day I had to stand and sit in front of the tabernacle. I didn't know that Jesus was in tabernacle. That shows you how far off I was. But the Lord had powerfully drawn me to himself. I didn't know why. Then I clasped onto the strongest weapon that Jesus gave us, our holy priests. And that Irish priest, Father Michael, who is a great lover of a lady. He was the one who taught me everything with so much patience, immense patience. He answered all my questions. And he would laugh and say, are you not Catholic? Yes, but I am a social Catholic. 
That means Sundays, funerals, baptisms, and weddings. And as of then, my heart changed, crossing a thorny road. I wrote six other novels, and I dedicated them all to the Lord. I said, Lord, you have given me the gift. It is not mine, it is yours. And most holy mother of Medjugorje is the one who opened my eyes. And I will use that gift for you, and always and only for you. And I don't even have to tell you that these six novels that I've written for the Lord have had much more success than the first atheist one. Thanks to the Most Holy Mother, because it was she. She is the one who had also presented all of the characters of my books. And finally, I would like to say to you, pray much for my country, my Spain. During the course of many centuries, the blood of the martyrs shed in Spain was the one that has protected the Catholic faith. And now we need you, we need prayer. We need you to come to awaken our faith. And now I say farewell, saying that I thank God who is my way and my light. I'm not St. Paul. But the Lord has given me the gift of a true Pauline conversion. And my way today is this. It's called the Holy Rosary. Daily communion. And an absolute great love for my husband and my children. Thank you very much.